person who is not engaged in Uttam Bhakti. But to someone who is engaged in Uttam Bhakti, it's just normal. It's actually the normal condition of the human being, the normal condition of the spirit soul, to be engaged in activities only to please Krishna. Well, how can you live like that? Somebody might say. Uh, how can you live if you don't uh, chase pleasure in this material world? And the answer is that Krishna gives us all the pleasure we need from within our hearts. Krishna is there as Paramatma. So when we act simply to please Krishna with no thought of pleasure for ourselves, Krishna reciprocates by giving us transcendental pleasure from within. Huh? And from without, he also acts in such a way as to support his devotee and protect his devotee. Huh? Remember last week we discussed, we had just spent 500 bucks on uh, incorporating, getting a nonprofit corporation. And, uh, and I said, I, I predict that soon that Krishna would replace that money. Well, he's already replaced over half of it. You see? So we don't worry about money. We don't worry about collecting donations. Huh? You'll never get an email from us, you know, please donate. Uh, starving devotees in Chile. Huh. <laughs> huh? If we want, if we really need to, we can work and earn money. We're not, you know complete doofuses in business. <laughs> huh? We know about these things. But uh, the point is, Krishna is protecting us. And he's inspiring people to give to us. Uh, and that's his reciprocation for our devotional service. Do you think we're just sitting here collecting donations and laying around getting a tan or something? You know, going to the beach? It's nice and hot now. If you go to the beach, it would be very nice. But what are we doing? You come in our room, our place any time of the day or, or the night, and either we're chanting or we're studying or we're preaching, or we're working on some project or we're cooking or we're cleaning. We're doing something to please Krishna every minute of every day, day after day, 24 hours a day. Uh, that's Uttam Bhakti. That's pure devotional service. We're not engaging in any sinful activities. We're not engaging in any sense gratification. Huh? So you might say, well, oh, that's so austere. How can you live like that? Well, all I can tell you is that Krishna is giving pleasure from within. And this pleasure is so profound and so satisfying that we don't need any of these external pleasures. Huh? This is Krishna consciousness. This is the actual nature of the soul. You see? Just like, let's say, suppose your nature is to be a musician. Huh? Or uh, an airplane pilot or anything. Huh? But according to circumstances, something prevents you from doing that. And how are you going to feel? You're going to be miserable, right? Uh, let's say my, the whole joy of, of, of life for me is playing music, uh, which at one time it was. So I can speak with a little bit of experience here. Then let's say something prevents me from playing music. Uh, this actually happened. I had a car wreck. That's how I lost all these teeth. I had a car wreck when I was 19 years old. And I couldn't play the flute, which is my main instrument for, I don't know, about six months. It was pretty miserable. Huh? So if you are uh, getting a great deal of enjoyment from something, and then all of a sudden you can't do it for some reason, you feel really restricted, really you know, held back from your purpose in life. So as a spiritual being, our purpose is to serve Krishna, to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if we can't do that, or if we don't do that, or won't do that, we're going to be miserable. We're going to be miserable just like a musician that can't play music, or an artist that can't paint, or anything like that. Uh, because that's our real nature. That's our swarup. Uh, 
our eternal identity is already there. It's not like we have to create some new identity. No, our eternal identity is already there, but we have forgotten it. We've forgotten it because we have become entangled and attached to this maya, this material energy. Uh, and because of that, we don't remember who we really are. And we have this false identity, this false ego, based on material things. And because of that, we're suffering like anything. Uh, this body in this material world is always a source of misery. Like right now, I'm getting a cramp in my thigh because this stupid chair. Do we have another chair? Huh? The red one? Get the red one. Yeah, where's the red one? That's better. Now we're going to hear crunch, creak, creak, crump. <laughs> Musical stairs. Anyway, uh, this material world, this body is always full of misery and suffering uh, because it's a product of the modes of material nature. Uh, you can't enjoy the modes of material nature because they're all temporary. They're temporary, they're imperfect, and... Uh, so full of suffering. What was that? Yeah. Oh, this is you didn't plug in the uh, power? Someone plugged it. No. In the wrong place. <coughs> Duh. Anyway, let's get this. I don't know if this one's any better. Let's try. That's a little better. Temporarily. Everything in this room is temporary. Even the microphone. This is a totally professional operation. Anyway, can you fix that? Move the drum. Move the drum first thing. The material world is always a place of suffering because it's not our real home. That should go out in the sun anyway. It's not our real home. And this body is not our real identity. So how can we be happy here? This is not our swarup. Huh? But when we begin to practice bhakti, then we come closer to our real identity. And the more we practice, the closer we come. Until finally, when we actually realize Krishna, then we also realize who we really are in relation to him. Huh? You've all heard me say this many, many times. It's not a big surprise. But when we look as far as the internal and external desires or uh, characteristics of bhakti, we see that that also uh, matches the internal and external characteristics of the soul. Thank you. So the external characteristic of bhakti is that Uttama bhakti is devoid of all desires other than to please Sri Krishna and is free from jnana and karma. These are called the tatashta lakshana because they define the limits of pure bhakti by specifying the characteristics that are not part of the nature of bhakti. So there's pure bhakti, uttama bhakti, and then there's mishra bhakti, or it is when our desires maybe have a little bit of bhakti, but then they have other things as well. Desires for sense gratification, for mundane love, uh, for uh, riches, power, fame, adoration, distinction, uh, all these material designations. Maya, they're illusion, they're illusory, they lead to suffering. Huh? It's like I see the people in the material world and they're chasing after all these ephemera 
of women and money and position and power and all this stuff. And it's just like an idiot hitting himself over the head with a hammer again and again. Uh -huh. And you say, well, you know, the last time you hit yourself with the hammer, it hurt really bad, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you really want to stop hitting yourself with that hammer, right? Yeah, yeah, boom. <laughs> I mean, you know, I guess the poor fools, they don't know any better, you know. But once you know better, once you hear from the scriptures or from a pure devotee, and then you still keep chasing this nonsense, now, that's beyond idiocy. That's insanity. Okay? It's insane. Because you've already heard, you already know the secret to stopping all suffering.